It's Waiver Day. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Tuesday episode of the show, Waiver Day. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Another week in the books. Trade deadlines have either passed in some leagues or in a lot of leagues, this is the week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of decisions to be made. It, it, unfortunately, I believe that this is the perfect week for trade deadlines. And when I say unfortunately, I mean because it could go either way for a lot of people. And so when the trade deadline's sitting there and it's a, am I going all in or not moment, keeper leagues, dynasty leagues, you know, it's an exciting time. In our league, we get trades through the end of week 11. So, you know, people could be making moves Monday after a bad Sunday or a good Sunday. In our league... I mean, I don't have an actual mathematical breakdown, but just kind of eyeballing it. It seems like there's really just two teams that are toast. Like the and the other ten are are fighting for six spots. Yeah, and it's tough to make those decisions sometimes. Yeah, especially in in keeper leagues where there is a little bit of playing for the future, making trades for next year trying to make your team better if draft you don't picks. believe you're going to be there in in standard redraft leagues i feel like you can have the trade deadline much later because it, you're just trading players for players and both teams trying to improve for this season but if you're doing any kind of dynasty league or keeper league this is a good time where you're going to force managers to make decisions before they know they're out yeah, and that's that's good. That's a good thing to set it there. Uh, but you're right. Redraft, it can be much later if you want it to be. couple things at the top. You can watch and subscribe to the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We'd appreciate it if you have a moment and you're listening over on Spotify, on Apple. Drop us a five-star review. Support the show that way. It is uh, takes a couple seconds. And if you enjoy what we're doing all year long, that's a quick way to help us out. And... One other note, jointhefoot.com. That is our fantasy football community. You can go over there, support the podcast, and become a part of the Foot Clan. Uh, our community is over 30,000 strong. Get access to all of the premium Discord channels, an extra episode every week. Get access to the Injury Blitz podcast, all the premium tools on the website like the Stream Finder and the expanded start-sit tool, consistency charts, um, the expanded player profiles on the website, all of the uh, kind of premium resources, you can access those by going to jointhefoot.com. I want to move forward because that would allow us to talk about the Denver Broncos <laughs> defeating the Buffalo Bills 24 oh to 22. Oh, my goodness. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. Yep. Another, Another <laughs> almost upset. You're, you, are, you are scary. Uh, you frighten me. Yeah. And you know, usually it's one of those things where if you're if you're making calls against a spread, and you can get sixty percent, you're a wizard. You're up over seventy percent since the beginning of twenty twenty two, and and most of the time when you say one of your almost upsets, I'm like, Are you crazy, Are you crazy. Your reaction, I said, it's it actually confirms that I made the right choice. <laughs> Yeah. If you are yeah. not exasperated and kind of what, then I'm like, oh crap, what yeah. did I do? No, it's it's but it's Denver, impressive. Denver is uh, Denver is one of the most interesting storylines in the NFL right now. They yeah. are very much in in the the playoff picture. Uh, Mike, you talked about not a lot of teams being eliminated in our fantasy league. Denver's four and five. They've won three straight. They have a pretty easy schedule. Buffalo is the opposite side of it where they've lost again 
Uh, they're five and five. They're two games out of the playoffs. They have the worst schedule. They look terrible. They, their defense has been decimated with injuries. They, their defense looked so good to start the year. They lost most of their stars on defense. And But their offense, their offense just looks completely Yeesh. inept right now. It's weird because it was a machine, you know, and everyone expects the machine to get fixed, and it does with elite quarterbacks. Like, Cincinnati for two consecutive years has looked terrible to start the year, but you're like, ah, Burrow will figure it out, and they do. And, you know, the, the off games for the Chiefs, Mahomes figures it out. Even the offense in Philadelphia has had its little sputterings at the beginning of the year, and you're like, ah, they figure it out, and they do. And I still think Buffalo figures it out, but yeah. they haven't. And, you know, I can't really understand what's going on other than, you know, is this Josh Allen suddenly becoming Justin Herbert in the sense that, you don't have that elite defense anymore. The position that your team is in is very different. I, you know, Justin Herbert with a great defense would we'd be talking about him differently. There was as a winner. There was <laughs> uh, much buffoonery from the Buffalo Bills. Yes, yesterday. Uh, I mean, and was it three turnovers for Josh Allen? No, for the team. I mean, they had the fumble by uh, Allen had two picks. I think there was four because so I was going to start at the top. Sorry. The Go buffoonery ahead. to me starts. James Cook, mm -hmm. I get it. He fumbled. You teach your running backs that it's it's highly frowned upon that you fumble the ball, but he's still your best running back. And then you bench him. And that's dumb to me. And then But he would have no way of knowing that it was bad what he did. <laughs> they, if, yeah. I mean, well that. That there, it does go forward to another problem that James Cook did get back in the game, so I'm not sure that he really learned his lesson. That's that's bad coaching to and put back in. And that's why he when he dribbled the ball yeah, later. Yeah, that was more of a just an in your face. Look, I can fumble and I can still get the ball back. <laughs> Gabe Davis drops an easy catch that turns right into a pick. Is Gabe Davis getting punished? He's still he led the team in targets. They're tied with Dalton Kincaid. Then you have. Look, they were out of control at the beginning of the year targeting Stephon Diggs. But, and I know the, the matchup for Stephon Diggs, very tough against Sertan, but he is still an elite wide receiver. Three for 34 for your number one guy. Maybe that's part of your problem as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe targeting Gabe Davis and handing the ball to Latavius Murray does not a great offense make. Wait, it, those are worse players? Are yeah, you telling I, me that James at, Cook is going to help this offense. Yeah. And then, like when they got him back on the field and he dominated immediately starts ripping off chunk. And plays. then they scored a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you bench these guys, you're punishing your freaking team. Yes. You're saying, I'm going to make my team worse to prove a point. May, so maybe the drive. If you want, right, 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 right. Finish the drive with like, take a breath, a player, scold him on the sideline, get him off the field. Let me scream in his face. Yeah. And then put it and back then out. put him back yeah. out there. The, yeah, I mean, it, it. everything that they've done this year on the offensive side has seemed like it is swinging the pendulum and not making small adjustments that improve your team. And I don't know if that's the absence of Brian Dable, we, you know, from a couple of years ago and they can't yeah. figure it out. But, you know, you have the game where it's like Diggs gets too many targets. You go into the next game, Diggs gets no targets. You know, you, you target Gabe Davis 100,000 times and then Jason <laughs> plays him and he, he fully gooses. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it's a mess in Buffalo. I mean, from, from a fantasy perspective, it, it makes you, uh, nervous about James Cook in general, even though he looked great on his 12 carries, it makes you nervous about Gabe Davis's utilization. It makes you nervous about Stefan Diggs blowing up, uh, this locker room. Yeah, if has, they, has he deleted the bills yet from well, his social media? Look, you saw Trayvon, right? Yeah. Trayvon Diggs came out and said, 14, you got to yeah. get out of there. <laughs> I mean, that's helpful. <laughs> those brothers but um it, it does it does throw a little bit like you hope they just stay in playoff contention that's when i would be worried if they if they really dropped out of being in the playoffs i would be worried about a cataclysm in the locker room with Stephon diggs and then that could just change the landscape for how you view josh allen to finish the year because that's really what we care about we want josh allen to be josh allen yeah to finish the fantasy season we're going into week 11 just stay in contention. You should. I mean, they can make the playoffs for sure. Oh, for sure. But it's going to be tough. I think they play Philly. They play Kansas City. They play some tough teams. 
let's flip it to the other side. One of my biggest trade targets last week was Javante Williams. Um, I have been unsuccessful. I have repeatedly you will tried. Be, you'll to, be more unsuccessful. I have tried to manipulate the situation and get Al to send me Javante Williams in several different ways, but he has said, respectively or uh, respectfully, no. Last night, twenty-one for seventy-nine had a receiving touchdown. Looked good. Still a mix of opportunities being handed out. Six carries for Jaleel McLaughlin. Samaji P. right in there on on the kind of passing downs, and he made some good plays. Mm -hmm. Catching uh, every Russell Wilson pitch possible. <laughs> but this, the biggest and most impressive thing for Denver is their defense. They went from a 70-point defeat to being a formidable, tough defense tricking teams into playing their fantasy options against them and having no success. I mean, they have now – they they just beat the Chiefs, right? So they have now beat Mahomes yes. and Josh Allen. Yes. And and they have been – That's that's incredible. If you play Pacheco, you were not happy. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. If you play Stephon Diggs, you were not happy. Like some premier options against the 70-point defense, not – you know, if you look at fantasy points against, they're going to be forever scarred by that 70-point game. Yeah. So that is not the best metric to look to. We got to, you know, on our site we we limit it to last three, last five. You've got to start looking at a smaller window for Denver. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at the last month of games that Denver has played, they've played good teams. They've played Mahomes twice. Once he was sick, so whatever. But when he was healthy and they lost to Mahomes, they still only gave up 19 points in that game to Patrick Mahomes. 19 points, 17 points, 9 points, 22 last night to Josh Allen. Like, they are not. They're, they're they're shutting people down. It's actually a good defense. So that is um, a credit to coaching, I think. The fact that you could have a team on the way towards the number one pick and a laughing stock that turns it around so quickly. And, and what's crazy about that is they actually got rid of a few defensive pieces um, and, and traded some, I think, must have been issues in the locker room. And that team's rallying right now. Cortland Sutton keeps scoring. Dude, that touchdown. Can't stop scoring. That touchdown was... Seven and nine games. Incredible. He also drops a few balls every game. He's a weird player. But right now, you stay in the flames with him, right? He seems to be their number one far and away. I, I suppose so. I don't know how he gets a touchdown every week. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, you, you said seven and nine, but another way to look at that is like, there's only two games this entire season that he hasn't had a touchdown. That's crazy. Yeah, where was this last year, bro? Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> nowhere. Okay. It was uh, nowhere. Jason, what do you make of Marvin Mims and his one target and yet the second most routes of the wide receiver position? No, he uh, he, he looked he looked great in the game. I know statistically you say, oh, you know, what, one could, catch, but his, no, 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 no. His return no one catch, target. No catch, or one, yes, yeah, thank, statistically, thank you, thank you. he was infinite zero. Right. But his his punt returns, um, you know, as a returner, when he's got the ball in his hands, which obviously he didn't have on offense yesterday, he still looks good. So if he's getting routes and being involved on the field on offense, this he's is not. He's this not is, being involved. Well, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, Quint, just to be fair, Quentin Johnston mm -hmm. play, reruns a lot of routes. But yeah. this is the first game. I know it's. This I, is the I realize first that. But time like Jerry season. Judy's not off the team, right? I'm just saying, like I, I would not be investing myself. I would be. Willing, I don't think they're going to throw the ball enough. They want to run it. I would be willing to, you know, depending on who you're dropping. I would be willing to uh, at least sniff picking up uh, Mims. A little sniff, sniff it. Pick. Just like, <laughs> yeah, think about that. No, no, not me. No. Um, I want to be in on it, but I, I don't think it's realistic to expect. A lot there. Uh, but this team is it's on a roll. Anything else you want to talk about there? Uh, uh, the end of the game was Yeah, that was awesome. The, the, the more buffoonery. The buffoonery continued. Um how do teams not do that Russell Wilson moon ball on the deep shots more? Like just intentionally throw it real early, real high. So that the the offensive player has to come back because they're the ones that know. Oh, this ball is about. I mean, that only yards short. That doesn't work at all unless it's an all out blitz, because you you have a safety and the safety just goes and intercepts the ball. So it only works when it's one on one Fair. going downfield. But 
the play before when he got sacked, I literally, I was like, why didn't you just chuck it? Yeah. Well, and, they did. And then they chucked it the next play. They and, did. And that was both impossible for the defender and all, and yet, you know, it, it was clearly P.I. So, and then they, they 12 men on the field. Buffalo blew, blew the game. I mean, just, just ridiculous. And then uh, even with 12 guys on the field, they still didn't uh, block the field goal. Do we have breaking news, Rap? We do. Did they just fire Dorsey? They yeah they did. did they just fired Ken Dorsey. Well, this is um, glad we lingered on the game. Yeah, Ken Dorsey's gone. So we got interim OC Joe Brady. Yeah, Joe Brady. I'd like to introduce you to Stephon Diggs <laughs> and James Cook. They will be meeting you in your <laughs> office momentarily. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. I have a hunch that they fired him after watching the game and what happened. Yeah. <laughs> the old uh, Gannon, we, we checked the tape. Yeah, I think they checked the tape live and was like, what are we doing? Uh, I, I guess I didn't mention it. Dalton Kincaid was good for fantasy, again. Yeah. Um, he did have another – he had a drop oh, yeah. the same way that, that um, Gabe Davis yeah. did. But he is getting targeted quite frequently, and it's fun to see a tight end downfield, like on the wheel route. All right, T. Higgins, unlikely to play in week 11. It's a uh, – Oh, cool. That's a Thursday game, right? Cool, cool, yeah, cool. That's cool. probably why it's, it, it's you know easy what? to tell yeah. right now. It is cool, Mike. It's cool because that's his best chance of not doing the T. Higgins dance of I'm active, inactive for mm -hmm. you. Just be happy. Uh, no, I – All right, just be sad. Not when you've seen my starting roster. Uh, who, are you, who are you putting in instead of T. Higgins this week? Literally don't know. Literally don't. <laughs> I don't I've never heard of him. They're probably on the waiver wire somewhere. Hmm. Yes. A.J. Dillon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's back. Matthew Stafford. Expected to play against the Seahawks in week 11. Okay. Yay, okay. says Puka managers everywhere. Yeah, I would imagine cup managers as For well. For sure. Zay Jones arrested on a domestic battery charge. Uh, uh, he's already injured, and dude. I don't want to talk about him anymore. Buccaneers, no issues with the thumb injury for Baker Mayfield. Expected to start this week. Baker's playing okay this year. He is. Deshaun Watson will undergo an MRI, have tests on his ankle. I think he already did that. Um, and we are hearing maybe a mild high ankle sprain for Deshaun Watson, but we expect him to play. Yeah, that's, that's how I heard it reported. Uh, he might... Uh, Knowing Deshaun Watson, he might need some rest, but we'll yeah. we'll wait and see. I really don't want that. You don't because you, don't want you have Amari Cooper because he's very good for Amari Cooper. He is he is much much better than the backups for Amari Cooper. Yes, Keenan Allen, Gerald Everett, day to day with shoulder and back injuries. Keenan went out of that game for a minute, so it's not unexpected. Veteran uh, Michael Thomas, significant knee injury. Saints are not going to have him back. At at. <laughs> A.T. Perry, that is. Uh, he played a yep. ton of snaps. Yeah. Probably doesn't matter. Derek Carr, concussion protocol. And then just a couple reminders for you as you look at – this is a waiver show. We're going to jump in momentarily. But a reminder of some players eligible to return. Devon Achan. <laughs> uh, Pat Fryermuth. Yeah. We'll see if he returns to practice. He's got to take some time. The hamstring was the re-injury. And then next week, week 12, Kyron Williams. I, You know, Kyron is uh, still sitting at, like, number four in, in points per game at the, at the running back position. The concern for Kyron to me is the schedule. Uh, he's got some issues on it. And so when I looked at maybe targeting him on the cheap for the stretch run, I got a little nervous about the schedule. I don't know if you have it in front of you, Jason. Are you looking at it? Yeah, I, I've got it pulled up. I think so. there's a few matchups that I am not excited about. Well, he comes back for the Arizona Cardinals, which is fantastic. That's great. That's well, great. That, assuming he's back then. Yes, right he, away. he is eligible to return. Based on the injury, I, I still expect him to be there week 12. Um, I'd bet money on that. But week 13, Cleveland. Not good. Yuck. Baltimore Ravens. Ooh. Yuck. Two weeks later, the Saints running defense. Yeah. And they end the season with the San Francisco 49ers. Granted, that will be after most fantasy championships. Yep. So uh, there you go. That is it for today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Welcome to the Waiver Wire presented by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. 
The bye week dance continues this week. The Colts, Falcons, Patriots, and Saints head to the bye. We have no bye weeks for Thanksgiving week, which means the Megalodon is coming up. <sighs> it also means it's going to be a gigantic episode. Even more mega. Oh, no buys. Yeah, yeah probably six hours. Um, Next Wednesday. Next yeah. Wednesday, Brooks. And then week 13, when everybody's really trying Dude. to get into the fantasy playoffs, mm. we're going to, you know, you don't have your Bears, your Bills, your Giants, your Raiders, your Ravens, your Vikings. Just forget about it. Those yeah. guys are not going to be on your team. It is brutal. I was just breaking down uh, our league of record with these guys because we're, we're all three, essentially. I think we're all tied. We right? are. So we're all neck and neck. Like, any loss moving forward is horrific. And then I looked at my week 13 and – Wept. <laughs> and no Stephon Diggs, no Mark Andrews, no Jordan Addison. So uh, start preparing now for week 13, everybody. Better hope T. Higgins is back by then. Oh, he will not be. <laughs> no, well, well let, 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 me, let me scratch that. He will be in week 12, but then he won't be. Oh, because of re-injury. In, yeah, because he'll get hurt again. You know, for someone who really loves T. Higgins, he's I, caused dude, you a lot of pain. I don't like him anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, on they, a pers on a just just personal. When you look at the, I mean, I'm sure we'll have an episode or some a quick question or something reflecting on some of the bigger busts of the draft. But like T. Higgins is in that category. Like Monster. a lot of second round, yeah, wide receivers are. Yeah, the second round, not just wide receivers. The, the almost the entire second round was a whoopsie doozle. And only Jameis <laughs> Winston can save us and make Chris Olave relevant again. Let's jump into the running back waiver wire. Keaton Mitchell sitting near the tippy top of that list because John Harbaugh has come out and said that, like, you know, we want him out there more. He is a very difficult uh, analysis situation for me because he's explosive. You can take a Devon Achan approach to his opportunities and say, look, he just gets it done when he gets the opportunities because the last two weeks you would have been happy you started him. But he only got four snaps and one touch in the second half of the last game, and – you know, you don't know how the game script's going to go for Baltimore against Cincinnati on Thursday night. And so, look, I'd want to kind of get him into my lineup for that game, but I'd be nervous. And I, you know, how should fantasy players approach him on the waiver wire? Yeah, this is, you got to ask yourself if you're willing to start him. Um, to me, I'm still hesitant to start him. This is a, this is a running back. They want to get him more involved. I believe Harbaugh is a very straight shooter, very honest. And, um, I believe that they want to get him more involved. But more involved for a player that last week got three carries does not mean a lot of opportunity. It doesn't mean, oh, we're going to have him be the bell cow. And we've seen with Harbaugh in the past, when there is a more explosive, younger running back, they will he, he often still have that player not get as many touches as you want, and they will bring the veteran, reliable is this a Tyson? Uh, yes, Williams? yes, exactly. Tyson Williams. We we saw every time he touched the ball, he was he was more effective than the aged veterans they had on the roster. But they would not give him the ball a lot, um, and I, I expect that to continue to happen uh, with Keaton Mitchell. So for me, do you like Singletary more? Yes, I even do. though Damian Pierce's status is up in the air. Damian Pierce's status is up in the air. Obviously, we had our uh, slight disagreement yesterday. I think that. This week, even if Damian Pierce is back, Devin Singletary is going to be a great play. It's against the Arizona Cardinals. We agreed on that. We agreed on 60-40 for this week. It was just remainder of the year Oh, that oh we disagreed. Yeah, I, and for me right now, this is about – like this is the time of year where I'm not focused too much on stashes. Like if Keaton Mitchell keeps getting a, a little bit more and more and more carries as the season goes on and four weeks from now becomes the dude, I hope you're already in the playoffs. You know, it, 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 a little bit – might Let me, matter about what your record is right now, but I'm trying to buy wins. I'm trying to get players off the waivers that I need to start. And this week, I would rather start Devin Singletary than Keaton Mitchell. Let me throw one more name in and ask Mike's opinion on the order. Let's throw Ty Chandler in there yeah. with Alexander Madison seemingly very likely to miss with a concussion. Mitchell, Singletary, Chandler. Chandler, the most available of those players, but where where do you you know put those guys? For this week, I would rank them Devin Singletary at the top, then I would go Ty Chandler um, over Keaton Mitchell. They're, 
it's interesting because Ty Chandler is, I mean, the, the season for him has been up and down of, you know, training camp. No one is stepping up as the number two running back. Then he has this huge preseason game, and it's locked. It's, oh, Ty Chandler is the backup, clearly. Then he was getting absolutely no work. Then they trade for Akers, but then the first opportunity with Akers out for the year, Ty Chandler was getting a bunch of work, and that bunch of work was while Madison was still playing in the game. So, I mean, the the tea leaves are that Ty Chandler will be the next man up. You know, in Wang Wu is is still on the roster. I think he got a carry or, or something, but Ty Chandler would project as the guy, and he actually kind of physically comps like Keaton Mitchell. Chandler is is thicker than Keaton Mitchell, but they run about the the same forty. They are both absolute burners. I mean, you watch the uh, watch the Wildcat snap of Ty Chandler getting the touchdown. And it's that guy is explosive. He can instantly get from zero to a hundred immediately, and he gets to play Denver. I know that the Denver defense is improving. We talked all about that, but when they when the Bills finally committed to James Cook, little speedster, mm-hmm. it was a massive problem for that defense. They couldn't figure it out other than you know him fumbling so I think that Ty Chandler I would I would personally play him well above see, Keaton Mitchell this week they see I'm, I'm I'm not in that boat you'd play Mitchell well I I am I don't think the difference between Chandler and Mitchell is enough to make me not take the long view on Mitchell I don't think that Chandler is going to have sustained value over time even though he was I mean he was getting a bunch of work I, with Madison I, he was getting some work with Madison for sure but I don't like the the committee situation with Dobbs there and Jefferson coming back as much as I like Mitchell on this offense that could be in a dominating position. I mean, we've seen we've seen Gus Edwards be effective in years gone by with very minimal work. Mitchell can take the backfield, so that I just See, I, I like, don't think he can take the, goal line at all. The difference between Chandler and Mitchell this week, I think, is a toss up. Denver's defense is playing well, so I I would pick up Mitchell myself, Jason. Yeah, I, if if I break this tie, I would be on the tie Chandler side. Sure. I, I I do think that the place that Denver still gets. Uh, beat is speed on the ground. Uh, we saw that with A-Chan. Yep. We saw that with um, uh, Brees. We saw that last night with James Cook. I think he was averaging like nine yards a carry or something ridiculous. Um, and I do think Ty Chandler will have a good week. We presume right now we got to do waivers today. Most of this year, if a guy's been in concussion protocol, mm-hmm. he's missing that game. And so that's where Alexander Madison is. I assume Ty Chandler is the starting running back this week. So if I'm looking for a start, I would prioritize Ty Chandler. I do agree with you, Andy. If you're taking a longer view approach, like if if you're not actually putting one of these guys in your lineup this week, then I go Mitchell. Well, and, and I do want to remind people that you like Devin Singletary because you just put up a career high. He did it against the Cincinnati Bengals. And so um, – you know, that, that is who Keaton Mitchell is playing on Thursday night. Sure. Uh, so those are some perspectives on the top three kind of names. There are a bunch of other keep in mind type of players. Ezekiel Elliott is on the bye. So if, if, if you see him hit the waiver wire after tomorrow, pick him up. He's getting enough work to be a valuable depth piece. Antonio Gibson. You know, you are playing with fire because you're probably getting about eight to ten opportunities total, and you hope that they're valuable, but they were last week. And then you've got some depth in, you know, you've got the Elijah Mitchell just in case edition. Yep. There's a bunch of those guys. What do you, It's really hard to decipher the situation. What are you guys doing with Deonta Foreman? I, this week it sucks because he has to play the Detroit Lions, but is – like, is – it? Is it, it seems like is it going to still be Foreman when Herbert is back? Probably not. I yeah, I, I think it'll. I, I'm guessing because he's played so well, he will be active for game days, and then it will be a three-headed right. split. So I'm I'm very low on Deont Foreman. I wouldn't want to start him this week in Detroit, and then by then Khalil Herbert will be back. So I'm I'm uh, lukewarm. I would drop Deont Foreman for those other guys if if I had him if I needed that roster spot. And yeah, and look for Khalil Herbert on the waiver wire. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's possible. And, uh, we got, what, 59% on percent on uh, sleeper, 66% on Foreman's on more ro- more rostered right now than, than Khalil Herbert. And so then, so you, you do need to keep that in mind. When Fields gets back, that offense gets better. And he is probably just an insurance running back. 
But Rico Dowdle of the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, can the Cowboys keep doing this where Tony Pollard is not looking like Tony Pollard and Dowdle is looking better and better and better? I'm not saying Dowdle takes over the backfield, but down the stretch run, is there a chance that this goes more into a timeshare? I think that that has a slight possibility. Against Carolina this week right. is, is interesting because you could easily see a fourth quarter of Beef yeah, just Boy, like last week. Beef Boy Dowdle getting out there, getting 10-plus carries against one of, if not the worst run defense in the league. Apparently, James Cook is on a list of drop candidates for people. No, 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 no please no. don't do that. No. Uh, Miles Sanders, that's a different <sighs> story because Dude. if you could go pick up a start this week, like you don't want to start Miles Sanders No, right you now. still can't. Mm -hmm. So if you had to drop him, I think you can. Yeah, I don't want to do it, but I, I would I would definitely do it for Singletary. I would definitely do it for Mitchell. I would definitely do it for Chandler. Yeah, if there are better options, make the make the tough decision. I, I'm not looking to drop Miles Sanders. Similar this last week, I had Tyler Algier who – I might be looking to drop Miles gets, Sanders. Gets involved, <laughs> and I had to drop him. Um, yeah, like what? what is the possible outcome for Miles Sanders – by the time that we care, yeah, we're getting to we're getting to the place in the season where you got to do what you got to do. Damian Pierce, are you Pierce, dropping him? Uh, sorry, just the the next three I'm matchups not. for Miles Sanders will be Dallas, Tennessee, Tampa Bay. And I'm sorry, one more. We'll add the Saints in there. Oof. And and after Dallas, it's three road games. Yeah, you come drop Miles Sanders. I'm gonna go. I think you can drop Miles Sanders. Pun them. I'm not dropping Damian Pierce. Uh, he he's gonna no. Be, you got to hold on. And they're in the they're in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, Zach Moss, you can drop. Roshan Johnson, you can probably drop. Roshan, you could def. I would much rather. You can definitely roster. drop. I mean, I would much rather roster Zach Moss than Roshan, because Zach Moss, as an insurance option, and an injury ahead of him means Zach Moss is a star again. An injury ahead of Roshan, he's already had it, and he didn't do anything. Yeah, he was hurt too. It's Sh sure, but I'm saying Khalil yeah, no, coming it's over. back. It's over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quick break. Back with the wideouts. I think a lot of interesting conversations here at the wide receiver position for the waiver wire. Last week, no, last week nobody wanted to buy in on Noah Brown. Mm -hmm. And I know this because he's currently rostered in 36% of leagues, I, despite I, being talked about. Guilty. I I think my what I said was, like, I don't know how. I'm just, I just keep disrespecting Noah Brown, and I'm going to do it again. And then, <laughs> and then I was wrong. Yeah. I mean, seven for 172. Throwing the football a ton. We talked about Stroud over 300 yards again. You get Arizona this week. Oh, man. Uh, Noah Brown is a worthy flex play, in my opinion, this week. <laughs> I mean, I get, I get it. Yeah. I get it. We, but also, it's but... like Nico, Nico could miss again. <laughs> right. But if Nico comes back, if Nico and Robert Woods are active, are, are you, played, do you think yes. Noah Brown is he will be flex? Good. Yes. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to completely stand up for Noah Brown. Okay. And it's under the same precedent that I said – yesterday which is he played his, the week he got hurt he played 68 percent of snaps that's about what he's been playing the last few weeks so like Robert Woods here there nowhere else I mean you're talking about week one week one okay and uh, so in the time we've well, seen the, Noah Brown on the field week one was no tank Dell is that right or for, tank Dell 48 percent yeah I'm, I'm just look I'm just taking it yeah. I'm taking it for what it is. It's laid out on the table in front of me in the last two weeks. Six for 153, seven for 172. I'm not saying you jackknife him into your lineup over, you know, Amari Cooper or, you know, somebody valuable, but he's worth picking up. There, He is the best at finding a spot downfield when Stroud is running around being magical. So that's, that's my take on Noah Brown. Okay. But number one in the league in yards per target. So when he catches the football, it's valuable. More names. Michael Wilson. Yes. Just 21% rostered, had six targets, just missed getting into the end zone. In a game where Kyler airs it out more, Michael Wilson will be a, a potential beneficiary. For sure. I mean, and, and he's a rookie that's that's looked good and hasn't had a quarterback uh, really good enough to get him the ball. So I, I, I like him as a pickup. My favorite pickup, I know he's rostered, but if he's out there and you need to start, Tyler Boyd. Is good when T. Higgins is not there. The 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 matchup against Baltimore isn't easy, but I mean, it, over the last three years in the games where Tyler Boyd has missed or uh, where T. Higgins has missed, Tyler Boyd averages six more fantasy points per game in those contests. Did you, did you happen to look at your 
on whether he caught that touchdown, whether you would have won, Jason? Uh, I have not. I have not looked. I My think heart no. You would. You would. You would have. You would have lost. I would have lost if he caught. That if touchdown. he caught that. If Tyler Boyd caught that pass, because you won by seven. You won by seven points, and that would have been worth at least seven. at least seven yeah. points. Because but instead, I am here on the show still. <laughs> yeah. Boy, yo, 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 and, <laughs> yeah. Oh, another. Uh, uh, the one thing I did look at. That's is, Mike. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> boy, yo, 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 Mike just kept saying, boy, yo, 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 Only when he made a good play? Yeah. So I did not say it when he dropped the touchdown. I, I said it when he dropped it. Because <laughs> yeah. it also sounds like the ball bouncing away from him. What What's uh, <laughs> funny, speaking of my matchup where I needed to win, barely won, I tried and tried and tried to get a trade of Jalen Hurts for Josh Allen in, in our league to, because Hurts was on by – and had I been successful and L, played Josh L. Allen instead of Brock Purdy, L. I would have lost. Yeah. Oh, fantasy, fantasy football. football. <laughs> uh, another rookie, Jaden Reed, alongside Michael Wilson. Um, I am a huge Jaden Reed fan. I Great think, matchup this I week. think he's the best. I genuinely think he's the best receiver that Green Bay has on their roster moving forward. Uh, five for 84 and a touchdown. It is. It has been improbable that a rookie can come in with Dobbs there, with Christian Watson, and – continue to establish himself in the offense and he keeps being effective on 39 percent of snaps and 51 percent of snaps and 48 percent of snaps we talk about targets being earned um kyle i don't know if you have his targets per route run i bet it's pretty decent considering his snap counts uh he is he's interesting it, it's still a nervous play when you don't get a lot of snaps yeah but um you know you want to start Jaden reed or alec pierce guys oh yeah Jaden you know. reed and he plays the chargers Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks had 10 targets from out of nowhere, 9 for 173 and a touchdown. Obliterated the hapless New York Giants on, uh, and he's rostered in about 48% of leagues, 19.4% target per route run for Jaden Reed. That's not bad. That's no. that's, that's, that's that's pretty good. good. Um, on, on Brandon Cooks, I have a hard time trusting him. I know that uh, you just said it, 10 targets out of nowhere. The, the previous several weeks was two targets, four, 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 four. Um, this is not a great matchup against Carolina the, just because, uh, I, granted, for similar reasons with the Giants last week, you wouldn't expect um, them to keep throwing the ball, but I guess they really wanted to stick it to the Giants last week. So you'd uh, play Noah Brown over Brandon Cooks this week? I would. You'd play Michael Wilson over Brandon Cooks this week against Houston? That one's a little tougher. I think you could go either way there. Um, I would play Tyler Boyd, and I would play Jaden Reed over Brandon Cooks. Uh, another drop it like it's hot candidate, Demario Douglas. If he hits waiver wires heading into the bye, he is getting targeted a lot, and they may change quarterback, so who knows what's going to happen. Kyle Phillips is not rostered anywhere, continues to get targets in the Tennessee offense with no Traylon Burks, but not a lot of confidence in that situation. Marvin Mims, we mentioned it. He's running routes at this point, but had one target. Um, that's a tough one. At least he's on the field. He's on the field, and he's very talented, and the team is trending in the right direction. Sure. Uh, Khalil Shakir last night, he was a step back. He had been targeted regularly last week, or last night only one catch, two targets. Jalen Guyton, six targets for – So he he's interesting. I Yes, I think that Guyton is, is, a, is very sneaky. Here's – he was four for 41 in a touchdown, and ironically, Quentin was four for 34 in a touchdown. I don't think, and I made the decision, I'll, I'll throw this out there for the drop candidates, like I, I cut Joshua Palmer. And the reason I cut Joshua Palmer is that by the time he gets back off of IR, the sentiment around the team is that he might not be back then. Like this injury may take him beyond the IR mm. time period, and all of a sudden you're like, am I going to put Joshua Palmer back into my lineup? Three or four weeks from now? No, I'm not going to do that because Guyton is back. He wasn't there when Palmer left. And Quentin Johnston, say what you will, he's going to continue to be worked into the offense. So, you know. But second game back from Guyton's injury, which he was recovering from uh, ACL, right? Yeah, it was It was a long injury. So he is a completely forgotten player. Played 79% of snaps. And that's what I was going to say. In the second game back, 79% of the snaps, six targets, I'm sure Jalen Guyton has more 
trust already built up from from Justin Herbert. So, like there there is while ever all the attention is on Huge finally having a decent fantasy game, Guyton might actually be the number two wide receiver. And and if and Keenan Allen, we expect him to be fine. He came back in the game, but. It it is Keenan Allen, so there's and he's older. There's a chance maybe he misses some time. And Jalen Guyton not rostered in a single league, so <laughs> he is available. Neither is A. T. Perry, the six round rookie who is now he played eighty eighty four percent of snaps for the Saints, caught a touchdown. He's going on by, so he's yeah. he's a name. Eh, that, forget about it then. I mean, maybe if you're in a six five, if you're in a wow, yeah, he's six a bean, five he's a two bean, oh five bean pole. Uh, if you're in a really deep league, pay attention to him. Um, is Rashid but, Shahid out there at all? What's the roster percentage sh- for I'll Rashid Shahid? On him. That's that's who you need to pay attention to. He's 47. percent Yeah, that's okay. and he'll get dropped. Probably. I think Rashid Shahid is is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep is going to be near the tippy top. If I'm not playing somebody this week, Rashid Shahid is going to be meaningful because Thomas is gone. And Carr, unfortunately, is probably going to come back. And if Carr comes back, he has <laughs> eyes for Shahid, not for Olave. <laughs> So that that's actually the sneakiest pickup of the week to me. Yeah, George Pickens, would you drop him? No, no. Nah, eh, probably not. Christian Watson, I would happily drop. Yeah, he's a he's a honey pot. Drop him onto the waiver wire. A honey pot? You never heard that term? No. In like in like uh, spy terms. No. You, you trick someone with a alluring yeah. character. Yeah. Okay. But it's a trick. Yeah. It's mm. like a Trojan mm. horse. Yeah. The... This this honey so good. <laughs> Splat! Yeah, you get you get killed. Yeah, and then the Venus flytrap beats you. Uh, Jahan Dotson. Yeah. Dude. Oh man, dude, you mean Gabe Davis? Dude. <laughs> yeah. Dude. <laughs> I mean, how do you go? How do you go from the th- uh. previous three games? The previous three games, he would have been on pace for 150 targets. He was averaging nine targets a game. Did you say he played the most snaps? Yeah. He played 95% of the snaps, <sighs> the most snaps that he's played all year. And Just boot him. No just, catches. Just play somebody yeah. else. I'm sorry. He I'm might, sorry. may not want to deal with it. Um. All right. Uh, we have some tight ends to get into. Although I just... <laughs> I forgot we did not announce that we have a new t-shirt on the website because somebody just <laughs> somebody just sent it through to me. Okay. And it's important because uh, some effort was put in oh, by the team here. It's good. Oh, but Brooks wants you, a breaking if, if news go, drop? Do you want a breaking news drop for this, Brooks? Breaking news. That's for the shirt? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, good old Andrew Schneider over here. We He's he's dropped the new shirt onto shopballers.com. We haven't had a nickname shirt this year that is has been worthy of a of a, of a t-shirt. So if you want a new Ballers but, t-shirt for the year. But there has been a person who has come up on almost every show. Football's greatest villain. Yes. And that would be Arthur Sith. <laughs> and you got to go look at the picture because it's quite delightful. <laughs> it's, it is Arthur Smith looking like an evil villain with a no Bijan hat on. <laughs> and it's quite good. And so, if, if you're in Atlanta... If we, if, if all people in Atlanta need to get this shirt and go to the home games, we did. We got to get Arthur Smith going around. We got a report that Arthur Smith very likely to retain his job heading into next year, unless, unless, unless they feel like he is losing the players. And if the players buy this shirt, that if, will be yeah. an indicator. <laughs> so, someone, if if you are connected with the players at all. To get a big care package, mark anonymous, and send it in, and yeah. see if they show up warming up so in an that's, Arthur T-shirt. That's on the website now. Is that true? Shopballers dot com. Right. Uh, <laughs> tight end pickups, uh, certainly at the very, very tippy top of the list. Probably yep. not available in any of your competitive leagues. Yeah, we get it. Trey McBride. Yep. But if he was there, you get him. If he's if he's there, you pick him up, even if you've got Travis Kelsey. Because you can flex Trey McBride. Like, he's he's a very, very good play the next two weeks. So, uh, we didn't mention it, but uh, part of the upcoming eligible to return, Zach Ertz is technically eligible to return in week 12. Can he's also, we, hold on, hold on. He is eligible to retire. Yes. Uh, there are many, many things we can say there. And we had our plan of people writing him the, 
the happy retirement cards, try and try and trick the old guy. Can we convince the coaching staff to tell Ertz that they did designate him to return? But then when it comes time, they go, oh, man, we totally forgot to do it. The paperwork. Yeah. We just we didn't send in the paper. We totally it, – it slipped my mind. I'll get to it tomorrow. Next week. As somebody, Is that possible? Uh, we can work on it. Okay. Yeah. So, look, the, the options really aren't great beyond Trey McBride. You're picking up players that you just need to guarantee snaps and, and some targets. Logan Thomas would be at the top of that list if, mm-hmm. if he's available. And then you get into like Kate Otten. I'm not I'm not in on Pat Fryermuth. I'm sorry. Like it just hasn't been there. Um the offense is too scary if you want to give it a shot and think, you know, he's a very good player. I think if you are in dire straits at the tight end position, he's worth adding on the back of the roster. Uh yeah, but you can't start him. No, you no, can't start him coming off of the hamstring issue that he re-aggravated and against the number one tight end Correct. defense. Like if you're picking up the Muth, that's got, you got to have two roster spots for tight ends. Is there, um, is there somebody else that you want to mention as it's a, not, it's not a great, take a chance. It's not a great week. Luke Musgrave would be the take a chance player that I would, the, the chargers, uh, are susceptible in the passing game. Um, the, Packers defense has been bad if the Chargers have a good offensive um output then maybe Musgrave gets more involved but it's it's not a great week for streaming tight ends yeah I'll probably lean Otten over Musgrave myself and and that would be an awful thing to have to do yeah hope you got a tight end defenses Detroit plays the Bears this week that's delightful yeah at home the Commanders, despite yeah, there lo- it is. despite losing their defense, it's a great play against the Giants. Yeah, any anyone, any, yeah. anyone is a great play against the Giants. Uh, What's the worst defense in the NFL? Uh, the worst is it defense the Cardinals. In, they're up there. I mean, if the Cardinals were playing against Danny DeVito, I'm firing them up. Yeah, uh, I'm not in on Seattle with with uh, Stafford coming back. Because Seattle's defense is yeah, in the middle of the pack and they're on the road. We put it in there before. I hadn't heard that that he was expected. Miami to play. against Las Vegas is interesting because you know they're really, really committed to the run, mm-hmm. and I don't think that's going to change no matter the game script. And so you're talking 25, 27 carries for Josh Jacobs. Uh, and with Jay- if they make him throw the ball, yeah, which they should with the points. Jalen Ramsey. Uh, back the the Dolphins defense is is coming into their own against Aiden O'Connell. I I really like them as a start. Minnesota plays Denver. Dude, they Minnesota's defense has been pretty good. Minnesota for fantasy purposes has they've been they've been all right. And that's not something we've been able to say for a no. long time. Well, no, I, I, at the beginning this was you know the beginning of the year. You lock in what you think, and at the beginning of the year, it was well, oh, Minnesota Vikings. Their offense stinks again, and just like Denver, they've been turning it around. Brian Flores, who knew? Good, good coach. <laughs> He's done a great job. <laughs> yeah. Today's waiver wire was brought to you by Call of Duty Modern Warfare Three. Face off against the ultimate threat in single player. Settle old scores on 16 iconic maps in multiplayer and survive the hordes in a co-op open world zombie experience. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, available now, rated M for Mature. Streamer time. Full stream ahead. Streaming quarterback candidates, uh, in our league, there's been a lot of this. I mean, it trades for players on a weekly basis to slide in for bye weeks Sam Howell's been traded for multiple weeks in a row and he's your pick Jay yeah yeah Sam Howell you know he's not widely available on waivers but he's the type of player that is probably rostered with multiple quarterbacks or a player you can go get in a trade for very cheap from another fantasy manager no one wants to really buy in and believe right now in the course of the season he's the quarterback three top 10 in points per game um, he's been a top 10 quarterback in five of the last six weeks, averaging 40 passing attempts per game this year, and they're 10-point home favorites. Little fact, Washington has been a double-digit favorite just one other time in the last 15 years. Wow. That's how bad the Giants are. The Giants are they're terrible, and uh, Dak did it in two quarters against the Giants, so it, it's 
It's there for this is the kind of matchup that Sal Sam Hell does tend to surprise you and let you down. That's fair. He shouldn't, but this is the one where you're like, come on. Look, uh I I <clears throat> prefer your uh stream very much over mine, and if you've got him, you gotta play him. Kyler Murray. Uh he is a he's put fantasy managers in a tough spot because he looked really good on the way back. But a hundred percent of teams that had him haven't had it. I mean, they've had another quarterback the entire season. You know, Mike, you were you're staring down the golf Kyler decision every mm -hmm. week. Um, in another league, I've got to make decisions with Kyler Murray as well, along with other players. And I think this week, you've got a huge over under in this game against Houston. You have C.J. Stroud on an absolute heater with this 330 plus passing yards every game. And look, if they are put in a position with their defense, which they will be, where they're down or where they're in a shootout, Kyler Murray is capable now with Hollywood, with McBride, with Wilson with Connor back, to put up a big fantasy day. I mean, I think two touchdowns is a, a given in some form or fashion, either rushing or passing. Houston is 30th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. It has finally changed. Yeah, Houston is giving it up to the quarterback position. And, because they're good on offense now. Yeah, that honestly, that makes a huge difference. So I think that's a really exciting game for fantasy. The Singletary and Brown and McBride and Kyler and Stroud and Dell and – Snow a brown. It's gonna be awesome. And Dalton Schultz. Yeah. In terms of like quarterbacks with low rostered, really low, it's it is a very, very tough week. And I think that Josh Dobbs is the best option. We've already been praising Denver for being a better offense, but Josh Dobbs defense. or defense, thank you. Josh Dobbs top eight five times, and that that includes each of the last three games. He's averaging thirty seven rushing yards per game. And just he has been making it happen. You know, with, he has capable offensive weapons. I don't know that we have an update on Justin Jefferson, but there's a chance that he's back this week. And the, if I think that, that Dobbs should be – he's a player I think that should be picked up regardless of what, what your quarterback status is, if nothing else, to block your opponents. Because if Jeff, once Jefferson is back, Josh Dobbs could – actually be incredible with Addison Hawkinson and Jefferson and being a mobile quarterback. So pick him up regardless, but I think that he's worth playing this week if you're trying to stream off the wire. Okay. There's your options there in full stream ahead. Tomorrow we have Hungry for More in the Thursday Night Preview, the playoff primer. That'll be a fun episode. And then we got starts the week and the matchups on Thursday. Um, fantasy face-off mm. in a certain spinner uh given yeah a, given I, I yeah. you know what the problem was is it was so comfortable last week the toast yeah. oh yeah, yeah. You, you just wanted more i want to give me more pillows to wear on my head oh no <laughs> that'll do it for today's episode thank you for tuning in shout out to the producers back there for getting everything right getting everything tight for the show today we'll be back again tomorrow goodbye goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.